How is it going? So we're going to go through uh, PNA, which is a partial nail avulsion. Uh, we do these procedures for uh, ingrown toenails, especially if they're really bad, really infected, or they keep reoccurring. So we'll go through the process of just setting up the sterilization or the, the sterile field uh, with the instruments, uh, pretty much what we need. And we'll go through step-by-step -step process of, you know, how I find, you know, myself conducting these procedures and, you know, I consider it sort of, you know, a, a pretty good a process of, of conducting these procedures. Uh, and hopefully that can sort of add to your, your knowledge base um, in regards to how these procedures are conducted, uh, what's the most minimal invasive way of conducting these procedures and how to get the best outcomes. So we'll go to the video step by step to show um, the process that I've sort of developed over, you know, over a 15 year period. So first we pour our chlorhexidine solution. This is for the phenol flush. And as you realize, I'm not touching anywhere of the basic dressing pack and the sterile area. I'm not touching any of that area. I do have non-sterile gloves, but I'm not touching any area that's better than scrub. We also uh, swab the foot or scrub the foot before the procedure. Um, that is a tourniquet. Again, as you can notice, I am not touching any of the sterile area, which is very, very important. You must keep the sterile field sterile. These are primopore dressings. They're sterile. Um, I tend to use them to wrap them with gauze, to wrap them around the toe. I find that it really holds the dressing really, really well, and I'll show you that later on um, in the video. Normally, I need about three or four of them. Uh, I just find they work really, really well in, in, in tying the gauze down to the actual toe. Uh, now, we go through the saline, which is for the final flush. So, again, we pour that into the, um, into the container. Uh, make sure everything is clean, nothing is mixing, everything is nice and accessible. Even for presentations for the patient, they like to see everything um, nice, presentable and clean. Um, we've added the co-band. Um, I'll show you how to apply that on. Normally I like to apply that. That's the phenol, which is a one mil syringe with a drawing up needle. I find that the best way to apply the phenol without the phenol going everywhere. I'll show that later in the video. Um, that's a 10 uh, mil syringe. Uh, sorry, one mil syringe and a ten mil syringe, and uh, that's using for for flushing the phenol and applying the or flushing with the saline. Um, sterile instruments. I generally use uh, say two sets of instruments, just in case you drop an instrument. You've got a backup instrument there. Uh, that is uh, riotane or better than swab. I uh, normally use that for packing. Been using it for many many years. I find that very very effective. It doesn't stick, um, and I will show you how to apply that later. So generally a nice clean dressing area. Okay, now um, we're swabbing back the toe, making sure that we've covered not just the big toe, the other toes, because your sterile gloves will touch the other toes when you're sort of leaning or holding certain instruments. So um, everything is scrubbed. Now I do give the local anesthetic injection after this, but I don't show that in the video, hopefully. Um, I'll show that in another video. Applying the tourniquet. Now I've got my sterile gloves on. Um, a black file. Um, and we separate the nail from the nail bed then we come in with our nippers you don't have to take off too much a lot of people end up taking like you know half of the nail a quarter of the nail only to the area where the matrix sort of ends maybe a millimeter or two in just enough to clear that nail from from the sulcus so we clip and we pull out then we come in with our beaver blade we cut along the nail, we use that as a guide, along the nail, the cut that we made, and we go all the way under the matrix, under the matrix, um, all the way to the, you know, cutting through all the way to the end. And sometimes you get actually quite deep. So as you can see there, making sure that the line, this is very important to get it nice and straight and nice and clean too. Don't do two cuts, try to do it in one consistent cut. You get a little bit of resistance, but just keep keep going, keep cutting until you either feel bone. Sometimes you can actually feel the the, the, the bones of the feet, um, or you feel that it's you know it's freed up. Um, then we get obviously our forceps. We clip the nail that we want to remove, and we rotate to the medial side of the toe. You realize not towards the out to the medial side of the toe. Now a lot of times when you're doing the medial side, I find that it comes out in two sections, and we'll see that here. So that's one nail out. That's the the, the, the distal part of it, but however, you can't see the end of the matrix, you can't see the end of the nail, meaning there is more nail in there. 
All right, so we go back in, we grab the other portion of the nail, all right, and make sure it's all clear. We rotate middly and we take out that section of the nail too. And you should be able to look in and see a nice clear channel to the to the end of the nail or where the matrix was. So that's the other part of the nail. We get our file, we'll make sure the edge is nice and clean. That's very, very, very important. Make sure you don't feel any other areas of nail. Uh, once that's clean, phenol um, at the end of a drawing up needle, literally just tap it, right? Just apply the phenol very, very slowly. Um, mainly you want to get around the area of the sulcus, but mainly you want to focus on the matrix area. So normally I apply it once, I'll get uh, a black file and I'll massage it into the matrix to make sure that it goes into the matrix. So I'll do that two or three times. All right, so I'll apply, massage for about 15 seconds, apply again, normally up to three times until I'm satisfied that I've done enough and I've cauterized the area because we don't want the nail to grow back in that actual area. So we need to sterilize the matrix or cauterize um, the matrix. So making sure, also with the black file, I'm also filling around, making sure that we've got everything, everything is clear. Um, there we go, I'm going back a third time because I've noticed some areas are probably not... Um, the acid hasn't um, sort of uh, reacted much with I'll go back in there and you're just like literally touching you only need a very small amount I don't tend to use um, uh, earbuds or buds because I find it absorbs a lot of the acid and it generally makes a mess here as you can see the acid isn't spreading everywhere it's not going I'm keeping it very localized um, in the area to avoid phenol burns and, and other complications that, that can occur so again massaging it in making sure that it's reaching all the areas. Uh, there we've got the chlorhexidine flush that will neutralize the acid. So we'll give a nice flush, make sure that's all clear. Uh, then we'll go into the saline, give that everything a nice flush. Most important, you've got to take off the tourniquet. You have to remember to take it off. So you, I, I get into the habit of saying to the patient, look at me, I am taking it off. Um, this is what I mean with the betadine swab. Uh, it's packed in so normally I cut it in half on an angle so I've got a nice small edge I'll pack the small edge in first as like a triangle and I'll keep packing that in and you'll be surprised how easy that comes out and it's a non-stick sort of um, material so you don't get like granulation tissue building into it or anything like that it's actually very very good um, to use as a, as, a, as a packing so I'll generally pack that up as you can see nicely it's packed up nicely uh, this is where I said in regards to the primopore dressings. So I'll get a gauze. Gauze is stretchy. So again, I'm not going to constrict the toe too much. Don't forget it is swollen because of the injection of local anesthetic. So as that subsides, um, you're not at risk of making it sort of too tight. So even if you tighten it a bit, it's fine. The, the toe will sort of um, reduce in size a little bit. So there's the gauze going around. And this is the primopore. And this is what I like about it. Similar to Hyperfix, um, where it's it's stretchable right but the padding on there would provide sort of a bit more um, absorption if there's any leakage so I'll go one around all right again I'm cutting off I would have told the patient at this time hey we're gonna cut it off look have a look off it comes we mark the time that's taken that's put on and taken off too uh, and as you see now what I'll do I normally do that to say okay do we have bleeding coming through I'm checking there there's no bleeding coming through I'll finish the dressing. So I'll put one at the front to protect the actual toe. And then I might go another one around. And uh, we're not causing any constrict like constriction. We're not causing any sort of wrapping around of blood circulation because the material uh, is, is stretchy. The material does have a little bit of stretch. Hey, I'm just cleaning up generally and just making sure everything looks uh, nice and clean. Also, presentation is very, very important. You know, um, patients going to look at it, other people going to look at it. The nicer your dressing looks, um, I'll put one more towards the base. So if you can see there, that will sort of hold everything down. And this is where the coban comes in. This is what I like about coban. Because, you know, people wear thongs and shoes, this dressing can sometimes peel and can peel at the base. So if you see how I apply the coban, all right, we don't need to use a sterile now. We've got a sterile dressing on there. Um, we'll wrap around the toe. This is a stretchy material. They use it a lot for pediatrics. Um, to wrap around, you know, uh, uh, limbs and toes, it's 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 very good. It will not constrict the the blood circulation. I'll go around the toe, and then I'll go around the foot too, and that will help secure um, the the dressing. 
and the actual um, coband that you're wrapping around. And also why I choose the color blue is to tell people, hey, my toe, there's something going on. I just had a procedure. Be careful, don't step on it. Generally, you know, post-op, so we've seen the dressings and how everything is sort of nice and neat, and I like to keep things nice and neat. Uh, so what about in regards to post-op? So normally what I do is I look at post-op um, after two days. So after two days, patients will come back in uh, and they will change the, uh, the dressing or I'll change the dressing and I'll show them how to change the dressing themselves. Now, if the toe really looks infected or you know it, there's some areas that I'm concerned about, then I'll see them again after two days for the second time. However, things are looking really good, then I'll teach them how to redress. I'll give them the dressings, that's very important. I normally advise give them the, the best dressings, the sterile dressings, the alcohol wipes, for them to be able to change the dressing every two days. Uh, and then you also educate them to look out for you know signs of infection if they're not if it's not already infected or you know um, to look out if there's any complications or issues not to get it wet within that period and then I'll see them at a two week review. If the two week review everything looks like it's healed well, then I'll tell them to um, you know to stop dressing or they need to dress for you know x amount of time another five days another week whatever and then I'll review them again for a final discharge. Very important that it gets discharged meaning. You've approved everything, everything is fine, everything looks good, and they, they're, they're good to go. Also, something very, very important is um, not just that they can't get it wet, they have to make sure um, that if there's any issues and complications, they contact you. So normally I say, listen, if there's any issues, something not not, not too sure about, send me a photo, um, give me a call, and we'll follow that through. So always try to keep a line of communication open. That's very important. That Listen, whatever you need, contact me. This is our number, this is our email, this is our, you know, where you can SMS, whatever. Uh, because there's a lot of problems that happen um, where there's no line of communication, they've got an issue, they cannot contact you, uh, then um, they generally try to solve it themselves or they go somewhere else. You want to follow through. You want to follow through the whole process all the way to the all the way to the end. And if things um, which you know take a turn, you know toe gets infected. Myself being an endorsed prescriber, we can prescribe medication, or you need the GP involved. This is where you need to take action. Uh, refer them on to get the proper antibiotics because they do get post-infections. You, you cannot avoid that. That does happen. Um, but you need to follow through with it, which is very, very important for that toe to eventually heal and for them to have the greatest outcome. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and hopefully we can have many more of these uh, uh, procedural videos um, in the future.